Welcome to your weekly airplane news update. This is the week of January 31st, 2022. We've got four stories this week. And uh, the first one is Boeing is investing even more money into the EV tall business. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about a 747 that decided to go taxiing into a bunch of baggage carts and creating a whole bunch of damage. We'll talk about the FAA targeting illegal compensation for carrying passengers. And this has been an ongoing story for quite a while. We've actually alluded to it a little bit in the past. And then lastly, we'll talk about an app that's going to help you with reading PyRepps. So let's get to it. All right, the first thing this week is Boeing is investing quite a bit of money into EV Tall. They've invested a lot of money in the past, but now they're putting another $495 million into this company called Whisk Aero. And uh, Whisk is a collaboration between Boeing and Kitty Hawk. If you're familiar with the drone Kitty Hawk that used to be Kitty Hawk and is now aloft, this is different. This is Kitty Hawk, the company that is making EV tall aircraft. Uh, they have the uh, Cora electric aircraft that is its sixth iteration and is now flying on a regular basis. Uh, the Cora has flown over 1,500 times so far. So uh, Boeing is putting a lot of money into EV tall, which is really interesting. Not surprising. Uh, I do believe EV tall is uh, kind of the, the technology of the future. Uh, we'll see a lot of different uh, uses for the EV tall technology. So we'll keep you posted when, you, when we hear more about this. And uh, yeah, and that's it for this story for right now. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about this week is this China Airlines 747. And at first, I, I saw the video popping on social media and, and, and I was wondering if this was actually even real. But you see this, or, or even at, at the normal speed, but you can see this 747 kind of uh, barging into a, uh, um, well, into a, an offloading area, parking area, and hitting a whole bunch of parked uh, baggage carts. And uh, that was at Chicago O'Hare. And what happened is uh, no injuries were reported. I'm sure a lot of damage was reported. You can see kind of the, the carts flying around and uh, not really sure exactly what happened. But if we find more information on the NTSB website, which uh, I'm sure they're investigating, uh, we'll be sure to let you know. It sounds like a, a major operator issue in this case. All right, the next thing this week is kind of a big one because, well, this has been going on for a while. Uh, the FAA is uh, targeting and continues to target Ill illegal compensation for flights that are carrying passengers or transporting passengers. Uh, this has been kind of the subject of a lot of scrut scrutiny by the FAA over the years. And uh, after some uh, high profile accidents, I would call them, uh, where uh, aircraft were op or operators were operating under Part 135 without a Part 135 certificate, uh, the FAA has put a big emphasis on uh, trying to educate the public because at the end of the day, the public is the one that is getting um, well, lied to in this case. Uh, unauthorized Part 135 operation are, I quote from the FAA, uh, putting the fly flying public in danger, diluting safety in the national airspace system, and undercutting the business of legitimate operators. The FAA goes on in the email to uh, clarify what sharing of expenses actually means. If you're familiar with this, if you're maybe a student pilot or you're already a pilot, you know that the FAA under the private pilot certificate allows you to share expenses with others, a pro rata share of the expensive at least uh, for everyone involved. Uh, the FAA is also uh, kind of clarifying that you need to go through the common purpose uh, test before you decide whether or not this is an activity where sharing expenses is actually allowed. Uh, they give an example online of saying you have a person who decides to go flying uh, back to back home where they used to live, where their parents live because there was a funeral, because there was some kind of event. And in the meantime, they have friends that say, hey, you're going in this direction. Do you mind uh, giving us a ride? In which case, if you're a private pilot, this is something that you can actually do because it's a common purpose. The flight is not designed to carry passengers from point A to point B. It's designed for you as the pilot to go from point A to point B and you decide to carry people along the way. They also go along and say, well, if you you have not enough space for all your friends and you decide to go and drop off your first set of friends and then come back and do the second flight, then that doesn't work because it's no longer a common purpose. You've accomplished the first purpose, which was to go see your family in the first flight. Now, if you come back and do this again, now you're transporting people for compensation and that is not covered under the private pilot. And even if you're a commercial pilot, and this is another thing that the FAA mentions in here, if you're a commercial pilot, it doesn't mean that you are allowed to do these kind of operations 
operations um, that may be conducted under Part 119 and Part 135. So there's a big distinction between, first off, private pilot privileges, the common purpose kind of thing, and then there's a big difference between having a commercial pilot certificate and having a Part 119 or Part 135 certificate where you can carry passengers for a hire and, um, and do what's called holding out, which is going to be advertising your services and letting other people know that, hey, I can take you to go from point A to point B. The bottom line with this is that the FA is, well, I don't know if they are really, but the FA is really interested in this. I was going to say they're cramping down on these type of operations, but I'm not even sure if that's correct because, because this is a very difficult thing to do. But um, So be careful if you're a pilot and you're engaged in this type of operation. Uh, make sure that you know the regulation and make sure that you can defend yourself in case something happens. And if you're a passenger, then make sure that you ask whoever is transporting you uh, to see the uh, part 135 operation certificate that says that they can actually transport people. Uh, we've had um, reports of people saying, well, I, I see these type of operation happening at airports where you have a pilot that obviously is flying a part 135 operation, transporting people, letting them out of a small airplane, and then they wait in the lounge until somebody else comes in. And, uh, and they're more than likely not part 135 uh, certified. So. I'm going to stop talking about this, but this is something that's ongoing. I'm sure we're going to hear more about this in the future, uh, something to keep an eye on from the FA. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about this week is a PyREP app, not a pirate app. It's a PyREP app, a pilot report. Uh, the app is called Verga, and it's going to allow pilots to uh, open and view PyREPs, including pictures. Uh, pilot reports are filed by pilots when there is um, a significant change in the weather, in turbulence, in visibility, in whatever it is, uh, something that needs to be notified to other people. And they're not always easy to read. And they're not they're not user friendly, let's put it this way. Uh, so this app is designed to give you an alert if, in case there is a pirate in the area. So worth downloading and taking a look at it. Again, it's called Verga, and then we'll put a link down in the description to, um, to, to that information. All right, the last thing this week is the Super Bowl. Uh, there is a Super Bowl coming up, and along with the Super Bowl, there's a TFR, Temporary Flight Restriction. If you're a drone pilot, we talk about this in our drone news as well, but if you're an airplane pilot, or helicopter pilot, then uh, this TFR applies to you as well. From the surface all the way to 18,000 feet, 30 nautical miles around the stadium uh, during the Super Bowl. That's on February 13th, and that's at the uh, SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. So if you're in the area, make sure, make sure that you check the TFR. There's a procedure. You can go on fa.gov slash Super Bowl, find more information about the procedure. If you're flying to this area uh, before the game, there is a whole lot of different things that you need to do. So uh, please be safe. Please don't be that person that flies inside of a, uh, of a Super Bowl TFR. Uh, never a good idea to enter a TFR, but especially when there's a lot of people around. So that's it. That's all I have for you this week. Leave your comments down in the uh, comment section. Like, subscribe, do everything you do, and we'll see you guys next week.